Good evening. Somebody say good evening. Good evening. Amen. 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 God is good. Somebody say God is good. God is good. In the midst of whatever is taking course. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the enemy goes to and fro. Come on. Amen. So when the enemy hits you, he's already been by you. Come on. Yes. Come on. You're not near me tonight. Amen. He said the enemy goes to and fro. So when the enemy hits you, you don't react according to when he hits you. We should have been reacting knowing that he was to and fro. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We learned through Brother Duran and Frankie that the enemy is very strategic. Mm -hmm. Amen. Very strategic when he comes after us. Amen. Uh, wants to get us. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our flaws. Amen. Somebody Amen. said, even the men and women of God. Even the men and women of God. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was, um, I went to do a funeral today, but excited that I'm able to be here um, before you. It didn't take me long to put something together. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. I'll, I'll tell you how, God, how good God is. This is my message. <laughs> And that's how God talks to me. He really does. It doesn't take long for me to put a message together. Amen. God is really just giving me a thought. From the thought, it goes to Scripture. Somebody said to Scripture. scripture. And, and that's how I put my messages together. So whenever I'm, I'm trying to get something done or get something to get together, you know, I immediately just go to my thought, my thought process of what God has ministered to me already. Uh, see, this is where I messed up. We want to go look to Him for a message to minister to the people. You should already have a message. Mm. Come, on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I mean, that's where I was brought up. Amen. Hallelujah. But let's get started tonight. Amen. One of the things I want to talk about is the characters and the flaws of who I am. So let me say who you are, Pastor Reuben. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I don't mind talking about myself. I don't mind admitting that I have flaws that come up short. Amen. I'm not one of those kind of preachers to stand before you and say that I'm perfect. Because I'm far from that. But one thing I've learned is take the word of God to apply it to my flaws so I can watch the miracles of God take its course. Amen. The manifestation of who he is. Somebody say the manifestation. The manifestation. And, and one of the things that we need to learn is that when God is dealing with you, you got to be able to allow the word to operate in your life so it would have something to manifest from. Amen. If, if you're afraid or embarrassed um, to talk about your flaws or because you hold a position in the church, you don't want nobody to know your business. Someone said it's always easier to let God reveal it to you than to allow yourself to be revealed to the people. Come on. Come on. And number of things we're going to talk about today. One of the things I want to talk about today is our testimony. Somebody say my testimony. My testimony. Sometimes in our life, our testimony is greater than the God that we serve. Amen. Because what we do is we begin to talk about how the enemy works in our life and how he's always against us, how he um, financially uh, breaks us, and how. Uh, relationship wise, he destroys us, and, and everything that comes out of our mouth is everything negative. Everything is negative. Negative. Everything that comes out of your mouth is negative. Somebody asks you, How are you doing? People would ask me, How are you doing, Pastor Ruben? Well, I got these issues going on. Somebody said, That ain't the goodness of God. Mm. Somebody said, That ain't the goodness of God. Somebody said, That's a flaw. That's a flaw. It's an area that Pastor Ruben has to work on because the scripture says, Don't let your goodness be easily spoken of. In other words, don't let the God that you serve, don't you deplete him, don't you degrade him, don't you bring him off the throne that he sits on. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, and the Bible says here in Acts, um, uh, um, at, I mean, Acts chapter 23, verse 11, I love this scripture because Paul has not yet went to Rome. He's dibbled and dabbled there. He's heard about Rome. He's anxious to go to Rome. Uh, somebody said he's anxious to go to Rome. Exactly. Amen. Just Rome. like us in the church. Amen. We get a title and we're anxious to become a pastor. We're anxious to go to the street because we're evangelists. But here, God is, the Bible says Jesus pulls up next to Paul. Somebody said pulls up next to Paul. Pulls up next to somebody Paul. Somebody said, let me show you. In verse 11 of chapter 23, Acts, it says, The following night the Lord stood by him and said, In other words, he appeared to him. Paul is anxious. Paul's ready to go take the word of God. He's ready to go preach the word of God. He's ready to go testify about the word of God. He, he wants people to know the goodness of God. He wants the people to know his testimony on how God took him off the, uh, 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 off the, 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 the donkey on the way to the desert of Damascus and how God spoke to him. And Paul's getting ready to testify about that stuff. But here I love what God says to him. The Bible says the following night the Lord stood by him, verse 11, and said, Take courage. In other words, he's telling them, get yourself ready. He said, get yourself ready. See, we get ourselves 
ready after the fact. Oh. Amen? Uh, after there's a need, then we get ourselves ready. And then we're rushing, right? How many of you ever had to do that? Uh -huh. After something happened, you're rushing. Where do I get this money? How do I get this money? Where do I do this? How do I do that? And, but here, God is standing next to him, and he's telling him, take courage. And otherwise, he's saying, prepare yourself. I would say, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Because you're asking to do something that you may not be ready for. Oh, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. The Bible said the following night that the Lord stood by him and he said, Take courage, for as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify also in Rome. In other words, just as it was for you in Jerusalem, remember Jerusalem was the place where Jesus was born, so the word of God radiated there. It was a place that was rooted and grounded. Mm -hmm. Amen. But Paul is anxious. He wants to go, I'm going to go preach here. I want to go there, you know, like us. Amen. I can't wait to get to the pulpit. And as soon as I get to the pulpit, I'm going to preach, preach, preach. But here he's telling him, get yourself ready. Take courage. He said, because as you are in Jerusalem, as you are in your house, let it be as you go to the church. Oh. Oh, okay. He said, as you are on your job, let it be as you go to the highways. Oh, okay. In other words, he's telling them, get yourself ready, Paul, because you say you want to preach, you're anxious to go to Rome. He said, but I want you to get ready because when you get to Rome, it's going to be a whole different lifestyle. Oh, okay. Understand something. Oh. As you go to the things of God, God begins to elevate you. Yeah. Oh, Somebody good. say, God begins to elevate you. Somebody say, God begins to elevate you. God begins to elevate you. I want you to say that because so many of us are elevating ourselves. Oh. Come on. And then we're wondering why we're in the bind that we're in because we're promoting ourselves. We lift ourselves up. We want people to recognize us. Uh, I'm the pastor of the church, and uh, my wife Diana is the pastor of the church, so we want to be recognized. We want people to call us, and you can't call me Reuben. You better call me pastor. We're anxious. Not understanding what goes with the protocol. Mm -hmm. Paul is anxious to go to Rome, but God, Jesus pulls up and tells him, get yourself ready, be encouraged. And the way you testified about me when things were good, when you had money, when, when, when you were eating real good, when you had Mexican bread, and you had barbecue, uh, uh, but now that you're getting ready to go to Rome, because let that testimony that was in you when the good times be with you also in the bad times. Yes, because Paul don't even know yet he's getting ready to be persecuted. Oh, Paul don't even know yet that he's getting ready to go be put in shackles. Oh, See, the thing is, is that when you become anxious and get a hold of God, uh, when you want, you think you've got a hold of God and you tell God what to do, you got to be careful because things are coming at you that you were never ready for. Wow. Right. Paul, Paul's anxious. Study the word of God here. Paul, <clears throat> that's where the scripture says, be anxious for nothing. nothing. Paul would walk around telling people, I can't wait to go to Rome. I want to be in Rome. And if you study Paul, Paul learned the armor of God in Rome right. while he was in bonds and chains. Right? right? <clears throat> so Paul is asking to go to Rome. God is already telling him, prepare yourself. He said, be encouraged. He said, let, let, don't, let, don't let your testimony change because of the change of land. Because oh, okay. the atmosphere changes. Oh. Wow. Let, let your yeas be yeas and let your nays be nays. In other words, when you go to Rome and they begin to persecute you, and Paul said that these things that are done to me, I have been bound in, mm -hmm. right? He was saying, that same testimony you had, when you have food to eat, you testify the same way. Oh, come on. Don't let your circumstances change how you feel about God. There you go. Come on. Come on. He said, don't let your situation change the way you see God. Right. God wants you to see him a certain way. Mm -hmm. But he don't want you to He don't want you to be on a roller coaster ride. Somebody say a roller coaster ride. Roller coaster ride. Right. Somebody say like you, Pastor Reuben. Today you're up here, tomorrow you're down here. Next week you're here in the middle, and the next week you're over here. Somebody said, that's the enemy. That's the enemy. Taking you into a place Taking that you weren't ready for. That you weren't Come ready. On. See, anything that becomes a battle for you isn't God. Oh. You know, one of the things that God really rebuked me, Pastor Sally, is that he says, stop telling people about the, product, product, about the process of God, because the Bible says when you're in Christ, you're a new creature. But you begin to preach people and tell people God takes you through a process. You delay their miracle. Oh, come on. Come on. We delay people's miracles. Because we begin to pray a different way. The Bible said if I'm new in him, right, that everything becomes new. Right. And then why am I going to go tell you that you have to be processed? Mm. Everything is new. The issue is that we don't teach people to have faith on what the word of God says. 
but we begin to look at their circumstances and we begin to preach to them in their circumstances. Wow. Okay. Somebody say, our God is great. Our God is great. Our God is good. Our God is good. Our Bible says our God is above all things. Yeah. But we got to be careful. Pastor Ruby has to be careful when I minister to people. If I tell somebody that um, Sister Jamie, she's new, Sister Jamie, God really wants to work with you, but there's going to be a process from you. God's going to process you. What I've just done is take the ability of what God can do right now and save it for another day. Oh, wow. Ooh, come on. Wow. Our God is a God of day and amen. amen. Yeah. He said, for those of you that believe, right? And he, he talks about us. If you, you hear a preacher talk about us, and we just have faith of a mustard seed, and I'm not taking from that. But people that preach that haven't got to the new place of faith. Uh, because the scripture said, Jesus went to them and he said, now for those who believe. Uh -huh. He didn't say for those that have faith anymore. Yeah. What he was saying is for those of you that are now rooted and grounded in the word of God, that believe me will stand on that, for, on that, on that sure foundation. Come on. But we, Pastor Ruben, got to stop delaying people's blessings. Oh, but, <clears throat> I'm talking about Pastor Ruben. This ain't him, but um, he's having some circumstances. So from the pulpit, you know how we do in church, I hear about it, so I preach from there. Mm, oh, wow. Oh. Or, we go share about it. Mm -hmm. Or, just, I know you're new to the church, but let me tell you about it. <coughs> what we're doing is delaying the ability of God's power to could operate through you and depleting it where you have no power now. Wow. Go ahead, man. about when... when when a person has to change, right? Mm -hmm. Like we have to, in order to to become new, mm -hmm. there there's not a process to change. Well, the Bible says that he that is free yeah. is free. We're free. Indeed. Yeah. So the, the we what I need to start teaching is that you're free. Yeah, you're free. But the circumstances that come around your freedom are going to rise up. Yes. But if you don't have the mindset that you're free, you're going to always be hung up with the circumstance. That's why the scripture said, let this mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He was saying, now he was talking about our character. Our, our character, our integrity. Mm -hmm. Right? I can't say to people that Jesus is good and they come into church and they see me all broken. Mm -hmm. That's why he said that your nays be yays and your, your nays be nays. What he was saying here, listen what he says to him. He said, the following night the Lord stood by him. In other words, God paid him a visitation. When's the last time God has visited Pastor Reuben? In the process of getting ready to be promoted, in the process of being getting ready to be elevated, Paul wants to go to Rome. But immediately God began to visit him and tell him, get it right, bro. Uh, get it right. I know you want to preach, but you better slow your roll down a little bit because what you're getting ready to do, you're getting ready to leave the place of blessing, which was called Jerusalem, and now you're going to Rome where persecution is going to come. And what he was telling him before he got to Rome, he said, the way you testify when things were good, you testify when things are bad. In other words, don't change. Don't let the verbiage that comes out of your mouth change because of your circumstance. God is good all the time. Yes. Somebody say, God is good all the time. God is good all the time. Uh, that young man that, that um, spoke out on Sunday, I felt for him. I felt for him. But I was glad that the brothers... Pastor Frankie and Darrell went to immediately because they encouraged him and reminded him of who he was, not the circumstance. Right. They, didn't tell, they didn't talk to him about death. They knew death was the root of what went on, but it was more to it. We're greater than death. Yeah. The Bible said that Jesus conquered death on the cross, right? So what we do, because I was just at a funeral right now, what we do is we preach death as an ugly picture. Death is just a place where we're going to learn from. What do you mean, Pastor? What do you mean, Pastor? What do you mean, Pastor? The Bible says that Jesus told them to carry their cross. Right. Right? But we as a church, me as Pastor Ruben, when I talk about the cross, I want Sister Jamie and Pastor Sally to know, it's my marriage issues, it's my financial issues, it's my relationship with the people in the church, it's the, the lack of, I'm not having, and God, and when he said carry your cross, he wasn't talking about your Burdens. When he said carry your cross and you understand the cross, in the Bible, when you study it, it said Jesus picked up his cross and went to Galat, I said Galat, and with a place of skulls, right? And if you look at that word right there, it doesn't mean your burdens. We may
day, people think that the cross is your burdens. What the cross meant when Jesus said, carry your cross, he said, die the way I died on the cross. He said, get rid of your old self. You can't follow me unless you can pick up yourself. You can't follow me, Pastor Ruben, unless you die to yourself. He was never talking about my circumstances. For many years, years ago, I would preach that. Carry your issues. Mm. You know, carry your problems. That was never intended. What he said is, go to Golapa like I did and die. Mm. So the manifestation of who he is begins to be manifested in you. Yeah. Until we die to myself, to Pastor Ruben dies to himself, there going to be no miracles around me. Uh, I'll always have interference. And then we got to be careful, Pastor Sally or Brother Casper, that the people that are ministering to you don't have interference. Mm -hmm. That they don't take from the ability of what God can do right now. Somebody say right now. Right now. How many ever needed a right now blessing? Yeah. Yeah. A right now breakthrough? Yeah. Yeah. I remember going to the altar many times. I'd be like, I need a breakthrough. And the people would pray for me. And because they knew a little bit of my business, they stayed stuck preaching to me about my business oh. instead of how capable my God is. See, God says we're more than overcomers. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said, I I'm more than an overcomer. More than an overcomer. So my, my ministry should always be in a manner that you're going to get to where you got to get to. Yeah. And we're going to have circumstances, like Pastor Selby said, but we can't hinder, I can't hinder somebody there because I begin to take the power of God away from them. Mm -hmm. oh. I said it a while back. We at the church make people jump through loops mm. to feel the presence of God. If you don't live like this, if you don't live like this, if you don't upright like this, if you don't tithe, if you don't do these things. The Bible said that Jesus came and he died for the least of us. Yeah. In other words, he came to die for the one that's unable and capable. The one that lacks mindfully. The one that lacks. Somebody say the one that lacks. The one that lacks. Yeah. See, <clears throat> because we have a tendency to tell people, well, this is the way I came up. We expect them to go through the same thing you went through. Uh -huh. No. You got to give them the word of God and the word of God only. Mm -hmm. Stop, Pastor Ruben. I'm talking Pastor Ruben. Pastor Ruben stops stripping people of their miracles. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Well. Stop delaying people of their destination. There's an intended end for every one of us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We get up and say it all the time. Right. We get all excited when you hear a preacher say you know, that that you, that you're so close to your blessing because the way the enemy's hitting you. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of truth to that. Right. But if you're that close, why can't we hold on? Yeah. One reason we can't hold on is because we haven't died on the cross. Oh. We haven't carried our cross. Come on. Somebody say, carry my cross. Carry my I was talking to my wife about this, and she was like, wait a minute. I said, babe, when, when, when he said for us to carry our cross, he, when she went in there and started reading it right away. She was, oh my God, you're right. He didn't tell me to throw my marriage problem on my back. No. That's the Bible. I thought that you always meant that. Yeah. Say, how do you know, Pastor? Because the Bible says, he said, casting all your cares on him. 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 On him. Yeah. yeah, on him. But because you're doing drugs and I see it, I'm going to continue ministry from that perspective of drugs. Oh. In other words, prolonging your breakthrough. Oh, wow. So I said, I need a breakthrough right now, Pastor Ruben. Yeah. yeah. That's why we have to be, always be careful. Somebody said, I always got to be careful. Oh, Who's be careful. ministering to me? Who's delivering the word to me? Mm -hmm. Or who's counseling me? Or who, who, who's encouraging me? Because the Bible says right here, he said, be encouraged. Be encouraged, yeah. He's telling Paul, be encouraged. He said, you're getting ready to go someplace that you never experienced. Right. The moment you come into Christ, there's things that you're going to experience that you never experienced. Mm -hmm. Because I learned that when I came to church, when I came to church, I thought, man, everything's going to be a hallelujah. And a, yeah, and amen. But I learned that when I got to church and I gave my life to Christ, as years went on, I learned that it got more difficult. Mm -hmm. It got more difficult. Did it get more difficult because God put a burden on me? No, it got more difficult because I couldn't let go yeah. of Pastor Ruben. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't know how to carry my cross. Right. Yeah. My cross was actually every excuse that hindered my blessing. Yeah. When I would carry my cross, I would say to people, oh, my marriage, that just hindered my blessing. My children, that is the end of my blessing. I had to die. So in other words, here, Lord, here's my children, here's my marriage. Here's I'm my marriage. 
Focus yeah. on yeah. the victory. And that's a difficult thing to do. Yeah. Because if your marriage is struggling like mine has in the past, right? In the past, some of the way back, wow. we have a tendency not to see the miracle because we still go home to it. Oh, okay. But the scripture said, let this mind be in you that was Christ. That means that when you begin to speak, you don't speak what you see. You speak the spiritual things of God. Yes. You begin to speak what the word of God says. Yeah. Now, um, uh, it used to bother me because my wife, uh, would pre when my wife would talk to me, she wouldn't talk to me about my strongholds. She would talk to me what the word of God says. And that would bother me. It would eat me up on the inside. I don't want to hear the word of God when I'm going through something. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. She said, what does the word of God say? What do you want the word of God said? She said that you're my country. Not really. Where are you trying to go? She said, everything that happens in this house comes through you. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to receive that responsibility. Mm -hmm. wow. Why? Because I had not yet died mm -hmm. to Pastor Ruben. I had not yet carried my cross. Mm -hmm. My testimony in the church was gained. Hallelujah. You know how we do. Uh -huh. right, uh, right, girl? You always see people in the church and hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jerusalem, you're good. In Jerusalem, you're good. Hallelujah. But the moment you go to Rome, <coughs> your testimony changes. That's what God is telling here. He pulls up. I was excited about that, Pastor, when I read this. He literally pulled up to him. Yeah. I got to read it again because I'm excited about it. The following night, the Lord stood by him, Paul. And said, take courage. In other words, get ready. When he told him to take courage, he said, get ready and be more like me. Amen. That's what he said. Take courage. How can somebody take courage if you never experienced courage? In other words, when Jesus spoke to him, he said, get ready to be like me. Let the same mindset that's in me be in you. The things that you speak, let it be as I say. But that's a difficult thing to do. Yeah. That's a very difficult thing to do. I'm on um, Acts chapter 23, Mama, verse 11. And he said, Take courage, at, for as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem. He said, You testify real good when everything's good. You know, we got our check. Yeah. Yeah. Right? We get our check. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless us. Right? We'll pay our tithes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. God. Amen. But he said, So as it is in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. look what he says. As soon as you testified in the facts about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify also in Rome. So that same testimony you had when he blessed you with that check, uh -huh. you have that same testimony when you go to Rome mm -hmm. and persecution comes against you. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. He said, come on, Pastor Ruth. You can preach a good message, but in the circumstance, you're a different person. Yeah. That's what he's saying right here. Mm -hmm. Your circumstances change everything about you. We begin to say, God, where are you? And there's nothing wrong with asking those questions. But we begin to question his ability. Why? Because we're in a whole different situation that we yet have to experience. And Paul was anxious. He was like, oh, I'm going to get to Rome. But immediately God said, prepare yourself. Yeah. In other words, he goes, you don't wait till you get hit by the enemy. You're prepared already. Yes. In other words, you come to boot camp. In other words, you spend a lot of time with the Bible. In other words, you spend a lot of time with God. That's the issue right there. The reflection of your prayer life will be seen when you're asked to pray. Yeah, yeah. That's what my pastor would say. I would get up when I first started getting saved, and he would try. He was trying to build me to be a leader, blah, blah, blah. and he would say, "Pray." And I would get the mic, and I'd be like, "Dear Jesus," I'll be honest. And he would come by, Sister Liz. And swipe the mic out of my hand. He said, you need to spend more quality time on your knees with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. That's what he's telling them. Yeah. Paul, get yourself ready. Paul's not just going to Rome just because he wants to go conquer Rome and share the word. The things that you ask to do in the church are going to be tested as high as you speak. Mm -hmm. If you think you're there, guess what? The enemy's going to show you you're not there. Right. Paul had to go to, to Rome, be stoned. Yeah. He had to be in prison. He had to be persecuted. He had to be everything. But his testimony didn't change. 
His discipline didn't change. They said when he they, when they stoned him uh, and he came back up after God took him to the second and third heavens, he got back up and started preaching again. Amen. He started evangelizing again. I would have probably been like, oh wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. You know what did your own uh, brother Jarrell say? What did I sign up for? What did I sign up for? Why did I come and give my life to Jesus? I gave my life to Jesus. I'm going to be honest with you. Not because I wanted Jesus. I needed a change. And I don't know if he was real or not. Come on. Come on. I came to this thing not knowing if Jesus was real. I tried everything. My marriage was lost. My kids were living somewhere. We I was homeless. And, and I'm in a bind. So I said, man, what can I use? I didn't love Jesus. I didn't even want to give my life to Jesus. I'm at this church for three years. Every day, people thinking I'm saved that I wasn't. Oh, wow. Say, how do you do that, Pastor? Do because that? it's not hard to walk around with a fake smile. Oh, right. It's not difficult to walk around acting like everything's A-OK. -okay. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, people think I was A-OK -okay and I was never saved at all. Wow. It was three years I was in this church before I got saved. And it took another man from Atlanta to come here and preach a word for God to penetrate my heart. Oh, wow. Yeah. So a lot of times in our life, we're in church, but we're not with him. Yeah. Yeah. There's a distance. Yeah. There's a gap between me and God. I'm not saying all the time, but I'm being real with you guys tonight. Because this, 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 this fight that we're in, that's why he said to he that could endure to the end, Right? We think like, oh, as long as I can make it to 80 years old and I die, I'm good. No. He was saying endure. Endure what? Endure Rome. Yeah. Endure ministry. Mm -hmm. Endure the things of God. There you, go. you know, we walk around and say, uh, the scripture says, uh, uh, for those of us that are being perse persecuted for, 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 for God's sake. Mm -hmm. No, we think because you're going through a relationship issue that, that it's for God's sake. No. When he's talking about for God's sake, for Jesus' sake, what he's saying, are you doing the kingdom work because persecution's on you, but you're still enduring? You That's go. what he's saying. Yes. Yes. See, we add all these things to the to our burden. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we have nowhere to be. We have no one to talk to. In church, Sister Jamie, in church, mm -hmm. three years and nobody to talk to. And it's like that today. Yeah. People are coming in and out of the church, leaving, uh, uh, when I say undelivered, I'm not talking about their habits, the stronghold of their mindset. Mm -hmm. And we have the ability. Mm -hmm. You have the ability. Yeah. If people lack when they leave here, the Bible says, woe to you, Pastor Reuben, who, 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 who spread my sheep, who scattered my sheep. In other words, when he told Peter, would you feed my sheep? Mm -hmm. But he was talking about, so you thinking about food. No. He was talking ministry. Yeah. Can you continue carrying on where I'm leaving off to you? Mm -hmm. That's why he said, Peter, upon this house, upon this rock, I'm building my church. Mm -hmm. He was telling Peter, where I leave, you're taking over. Same way with us. Yes. Where Jesus left, you took over. Yeah. That's why Jesus said when he when, uh, uh, when the disciples came to him and he was ready to go, he said, from this day forward, all power and authority has now been given to you. That means the manifestation of God's word comes through here. Amen. And by the laying on of hands. hands. But we don't believe in it. Right. Why don't we believe it? Well, one reason why is that we don't see it enough in the church. The visible manifestation. When you lay hands on somebody, they'll be healed. When you speak to somebody, they're going to have a breakthrough. Yeah. There's people in the church. I was talking to Brother on, um, oh, what's his name? The one that spoke up on Sunday. I talked to him right now at the funeral. He goes, I'm so sorry for speaking out of line. I said, You didn't speak out of line. He said, You asked the question that I had not yet been able to answer. Oh. There's people in these chairs, there's people in all these churches here that have questions. 
They want to know why. They want to know how come. Why they haven't got here. Come on. Yeah. Because a lot of times, like, you know, being saved uh, for 23 years in another ministry, you know, and, and our, our downfalls, our little bit of this, a little bit of that, or sinning, or whatever it is, you can never come to, to the leadership and tell them. You'd be, yeah. you'd be sat down and talked about. And, and, you know, and it's really sad because people get upset with me. All the time, people do. Other churches get mad at me because it's not because you can't come to leadership. You can't go to anybody. Uh, but we should we, be able. To. We should be able. Why? All power and authority has been given to me. Yeah. yeah. He said, "Be encouraged." Yeah. He said, "He said, carry your cross." In other words, what Jesus was saying, Pastor Reuben, you have the ability to do what I say. Follow the plan. Yeah. Follow the plan. The scripture says that Moses took him out. 40 years. Yeah. 40 years. Yeah. And the scripture says, suddenly Joshua rises up, and the first thing God tells Joshua, my leader, Moses, is dead. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, what he was telling Joshua, I don't want you to think like him, I don't want you to act like him, and I don't want you to be him. Yeah. yeah. He had great leadership abilities. He spoke to Pharaoh. He went and spoke to the people. Yeah. He got the people to the Red Sea. He had a relationship with God. Yeah. But as soon as he got over the Red Sea, and he began to listen to the people around him, he began to delay his blessing. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's true. People will delay our blessings, church. Yeah. In the church and out of the church. There's promises of God. Say, how do you know, Pastor? How do you know, Pastor? Say, what do you mean out of the church? Because the Bible says the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. Mm -hmm. That means that outside the church, there's a miracle waiting for you. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. There's a cartel dealer somewhere in Riverside that don't even know. Mm -hmm. But because of your faith in God and the courage that you have, right. and you're out in the right place at the right time, he's going to give you money. Yeah. But we stay right here. Mm -hmm. We stay with our little social security check, our little work check, like my little work check. I'm stuck right there. Mm -hmm. Right? Casper began to talk to me about that. He said, Ruby, you gotta come out of the box. You gotta start thinking other words. Mm -hmm. Or you're gonna be in that church right there mm -hmm. with your little check, mm -hmm. complaining every month. If God gives you money, there's ways of making money. That's right. mm -hmm. Without having to sell dope. That's why the scripture said Jesus got mad when he went into the to the temple and they were over there went selling yeah. and trading. Yeah, yeah. Because he knew the ability. Mm -hmm. And they had the ability, but they took it to the wrong place. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's true. We hindered ourselves. Pastor Reuben hindered himself. Mm -hmm. And here in this scripture, he's telling Paul, just as it is for you over there in the good times, let that same testimony be for you in the rough times. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul kept that testimony. It, 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 I love it because the Bible says that Paul was in prison in chains and bonds, and he's looking to the the of the of the of the prison cell, and he sees the Roman soldiers. So it was a bad thing that he was in, but because he kept his mind on Christ, he was able to pull out the armor of God. The, armor of God. Yeah. Yeah. the enemy who persecuted him was putting his shoes on. Yeah. Put in the shield now. Mm -hmm. In the midst of being in bounds. Yeah. Oh, the breastplate of righteousness. Mm -hmm. They're getting ready for war. They put their helmets on. The helmet of salvation. Paul got all that in a time of persecution. Yes. In other words, if we keep our testimony right in the bad times as it was in the good times, God's going to speak to us there. Yes. Yes, he will. It's just we get overwhelmed. Pastor Ruben gets overwhelmed with all the excess. Kids, the grandkids, this, that, the church. I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. That I can't hear God. Mm -hmm. Not only can I hear him, the Bible says that God seen that Paul Moses saw. Wow. Oh, you didn't hear me there. Wow. Paul didn't hear him. He was looking to the 
the Bible says he was looking for the treasure. Yeah, he was looking for the treasure. Yeah, he saw what God was showing him in the midst of the place he was in. The Bible says that all things work together for the good for those of us who love God. I'm learning that in my situations, whether they're rough or bad or they get real, real rough, I'm learning that my love for God has to increase. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. That the conversation that comes out of my mouth is life. That's why the scripture said that life and death comes out of the mouth. Just think about this. Don't raise your hand. But go home tonight or the next couple of days and let's ask yourself and be honest with yourself. How many times did you speak death in one day? And I'm not talking physical death. No, that's negative. I'm talking about the things that we kill ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. That we hinder the blessings of God. The good thing about it is our God is able and capable, and he's a, he's a God, the Bible says, that a man that he shall not lie. There you go. Yeah. So if I haven't received my blessing yet, it's not because God didn't give it to me. He's, I just haven't went and got it. Yeah, right. See, we put those things on God. God, where are you? You said you're a God of abundance. Yeah. I said that. I think I shared that before. Yeah. I think I shared it with you guys. I said, God, I thought you were saying you're a God of abundance. He goes, I am. I remember clearly. He goes, I am. You spend it at Zacatecas, McDonald's, and everywhere else you went. Wow. 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 Oh, my. Yeah. I shared that with my wife. So one month, this was months ago, years ago, I wrote down how much we ate. We were spending over $1,000 a month oh, on fast food. Oh, wow. On fast food. Yeah. And I'm questioning God's abundance ability. Wow. It comes back to what Frankie and, 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 and Casper have been sharing with me. Learning how to manage your time, your finances, because the money's there. Yep. My pastor would say things to me like this. If your house lacks, you mismanage your money, Ruben. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. He said because the, the, uh, the, 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 the blessing that you need, he said it's always in the house. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Just like God, have, you have a reputation God in a lot. We got to work at it. Mm -hmm. We say, God, where are you? Because the Bible says faith without works. It's dead. It's dead. Mm -hmm. And back then, when I was married, I was taking up any kind of job, even if it didn't pay me well. And I would tell him, I don't want to do it because you're going to do it, because you're going to learn one way or another. And I'd rather you learn in the house of God. Yeah. Think about all the abilities we have. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm going to take the store out of the church. That was Mama Vera's idea. Right? It's out of the church, I know. That profit that we earned there could easily be hers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can we have that ability? God created us. To be the head and not the tail. That's right. When he said I'm the head and not the tail, he was saying the ability to do. We just say the head. Well, I'm, the, I'm the head and the tail. We say these scriptures so light. I'm the above and not the beneath. Mm -hmm. But he's saying that you have the same ability. Yeah. Let me help you out. Pastor B said it briefly on Sunday. I preached it before. When you understand who God is, and you say I was created after his image and everything about him is me. You have the same creative power that he has. Yes. Amen. 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 When God said, let there be light, you have that ability. Mm -hmm. Didn't he say all power and authority is against you? Yeah. We don't claim it because we can't see ourselves doing it. Mm -hmm. And then if you start talking that way, then I go up to your sister Jamie and say, oh, you think you're above God? Mm -hmm. No, that's what the word of God says. Yeah. Yeah. That same creative power that he spoke into existence is in us. That's why when Jesus and a couple of people that Jesus healed, he said, <clears throat> he said, your faith has made you whole. Right. What he was telling that creative ability that my father spoke into this world is in you, and you got healed by that. Yeah. But we want to take it from him because he wasn't saved. Mm -hmm. He wasn't saved. Yeah. He's messed up because the life he's living. Jesus healed him all the time. Sometimes I think about it, I say, man, Jesus probably found it easier to work with them people than it was the church people. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Think about it. 
Because we make it so difficult. Yeah. Pastor Ruben makes it so difficult. Mm -hmm. My pastor said the word of God is so simple. Jesus says it. Mm -hmm. That even the children. Yes. A, B, C. But because we're accustomed to going and seeing um, this preacher on TV, uh, because we buy this book, and if we're not up to par with them, then we don't have that ability. Mm -hmm. You have that ability. He said to the least of you. That means that the worst sinner in this church mm -hmm. could come up here and heal somebody that we couldn't heal who's been in church for 50 years because mm -hmm. of their belief. He said, hold on to your testimony, Pastor Ruben. And then he turns around and he says, don't let your goodness be evenly spoken of. So now I don't, now I don't I gotta pay attention to my testimony, but he's saying, don't let your goodness be evenly spoken of. Be what? And don't let your goodness be evenly spoken of. Let me get the scripture for you. Romans 14, 16. It says, so do not let what you regard as good be spoken of as evil. In other words, don't have a twisted tongue. Don't talk about the goodness of God and go do something different. See, we look at that scripture and the way I was, the way they applied it to me was something like Pastor Sally just said. If you're a sinner and you're doing this and this, you're no part of us. Here he's saying, don't let your goodness. In other words, he said, don't let your character be spoken of. Don't let your integrity be spoken of. Don't let your righteousness be spoken of. We have a reputation. And that reputation you have is a reflection of who God is. That's why Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. And when they see you, they see Jesus. Amen. That's why he said, I'm the mind, you're the branch. Yeah. We're an extension of who he is. That means that Jesus is operating through me. At all times. At all times. At all times. But we put limits on him. We put limits on him. How do Pastor Ruben put limits on him? Because I begin to disregard what his word says. Oh. If he says I'm healed, I'm healed. Mm -hmm. And that's my confession. It's my confession today. It's my confession tomorrow. Yeah. And if I get four, four, four levels of, of capturing me, it's the same yeah. confession. Yeah. Exactly. My pastor couldn't even walk no more. The man would carry him, and he would come to the to the pulpit to preach, and he would just fall. And one day after church, I'm standing out there, and he said, "Reuben, all these people see me sick, but I'm healed." Amen. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because he hung on to his goodness. Yes. Yes. He hung on to his testimony. He hung on to the character of who God said he was. Come on. Amen. He said, "Don't let it be talked about." Don't say you're doing this and you're not doing it. Don't say you're doing this in the church and you don't do it. Right. Because we have a lot of those people, not in just this church, in any church. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Pastor Casper and Mama Vera and pa pa Pastor Sally could say yes to this. We always have the people say, I'll do it! Because they want to make themselves part of it. But when it's time to get things done, nowhere to be found. Yeah. Nowhere to be found. Integrity, character. Don't let your goodness. Don't come and let people think you're a holy roller when you're not. Because you can destroy a person. Yes. Yes, you can. My pastor said, Ruben, you better get right so quick because you got your sons coming up behind you, and I don't want you to be the responsible person for how they mess up. Don't give them no room. Live an upright life the best you can. Even when you can't do it, mm -hmm. let them see the reflection of Christ. Yes. I was talking to a young man earlier, and I said, how are you doing? And I know I'm good. He's dear to my heart. And he said, I'm okay. We went around the bush, stopped some more. And I came back around, and I said, how are you doing? He said, Pastor, you already asked me that twice. Oh. He said, because your answer hasn't came out solid yet. Oh. Our confession... I wasn't degrading them. I was teaching them something I learned. And guess what? Jesus said, if you don't disciple someone, you're not a disciple of his. Mm -hmm. That means that everything you went through is going to help somebody from keeping going through. That's yeah. Right. That's, right. That's true. That's what Jesus said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
It's happening. So they don't have to go through what you went through. The lack of faith. The lack of integrity. The lack of character. In the last two years, and they went to bid for Brother Casper, he said, Pastor, how's the credit? I shrunk. Do I have to answer that? I'm the pastor of the church. <coughs> That's what went through my mind. I was honest with him. And he said, one thing that we come up short, if we don't teach people their credibility, how to hold on to it, how to hold fast to it, how to use it for their future goals that God has for our life. Yeah. And ever since he told me that, it's going to be embarrassing if I'm going to say it, I went from under a five to a six, seven, oh. That's right. All because one person mm -hmm. spoke it into my life. Mm -hmm. That's your ability, Jamie. Mm -hmm. Those that are running around with no hope are waiting for you to speak. Mm -hmm. Come on. They're waiting for you to say something. Mm -hmm. You think people like to party with you? Nobody really likes to party with you. Mm -hmm. uh, what is a uh, Pastor Frankie say? He said, hurt people hurt people. Yeah. Hurting people hurt people. Yeah. And that's what the party life is really about. Yeah. Yeah. It's hurting people, hurting people. still hurting people. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But you have the ability to change that whole atmosphere mm -hmm. by keeping your integrity, keeping your yays, yays. Yes. When everybody said, Pastor Ruben, we're going over here. I said, no, I'm going to stay right here. Mm -hmm. Even if it goes against the grain. Mm -hmm. The Bible says remain steadfast. Unmovable. That means no matter what the circumstance is, no matter what's trying to draw me, I'm anchored in. Mm -hmm. There's an old song, I used to love it, I don't know if I've ever heard it before, it's an old song. It said, my heart is anchored in the Lord. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm like a ship without a sail. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's how we are. We're in the ocean. The ship that's in the ocean in the storm is going all over. But it's parked by the harbor. But it's anchored. It'll move, it'll be rocked, mm -hmm. but it can remain anchored. Mm -hmm. And that's what I have to do. We have to remain anchored in the things of God. Yes. Remain anchored. Don't let your testimony change. He says, so don't let what you regard as good. In other words, don't let the word of God that you say that is good be spoken of. So they speak, a word, they speak something negative because of how you live. It's been disregarded mm -hmm. by my actions, my behavior. That's why people will go, did you see Pastor Ruben? Did you hear what he said? Did you see the place he was at? Mm -hmm. Disregarding mm -hmm. the word of God. Mm -hmm. There's places that we just don't go to. There's things that we just don't do. Mm -hmm. There's conversations that we just don't have. If you guys ever hear my wife, you will hear her say, yeah. loud and clear. Mm -hmm. My wife always tells me, remember who, who you are. You are. Mm -hmm. yeah. She goes, you're joking sometimes. It gets close to that borderline, Pastor. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's true. Yeah. Yes. And that's how important our integrity is in the things of God. The Bible says that they, that they brought him to Neo, they brought him to everyone, and they couldn't find no fault in him. Right. Imagine. Mm -hmm. Imagine Pastor Richard and Pastor Sally dragging Jamie in here. She's this, and she's that, and she's this, and she's that. Mm -hmm. and, and they looked at her, questioned her. I couldn't find no fault in her. Day of the Dead discipleship uh, when sister was, uh, what's her name? Kathy? Yeah. Oh, Kathy. Uh, leader, how do you call her? What's Catherine Williams? Elder Kathy. Elder Kathy. Elder Kathy. Elder Kathy. Elder Kathy. Um, I, I had this, I've had this struggle. I, I like to dance. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was, I told her I was justifying it by uh, saying David danced. Why can't we dance, right? Mm -hmm. She got up. <laughs> She said no. She said she was a dancer. She came from Hawaii, doing the Hollywood mm -hmm. thing. And she said, because uh, I said the first thing that like they're having a surprise party for my 
for my sister's 60th. And I go, the first thing that came in my mind when I got the invitation, I wonder if we're going to have a picture. <laughs> <laughs> and then she said, yeah, it's, it's not good. She goes, you, you can, you know, you know that, yeah. but to go out there and dance like we did in the world. I remember uh, um, when I first was at the mother church, yeah. I would see these people dancing and shouting and da 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 da. And I was like, man, I want to dance. And one of the brothers said, um, just dance. You know how to dance. And the first thing I do was, <laughs> <laughs> true story. True story. Yeah. But one thing I did learn about dancing, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say you like to dance, because there's some things you're going to dance your way out of. Yeah. The scripture said when David brought that, the covenant, that, covenant. that he danced. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Oh my God, why did he dance? He didn't dance out of joy. He said he was making a path that no one else had seen before. Yeah. What does that mean? In other words, he danced the breakthrough the, all the way yeah, through. The he didn't only let his words be the breakthrough, he not only let the word of God be the breakthrough, yeah. but the yeah, scripture yeah. that he danced. Yeah. That's why his wife got upset. Because mm -hmm. they never seen that before. Oh. It was a new thing to them. Yeah, it was a new thing. It was a new thing to them. When I came to the Pentecostal church, that's what the church was before, a Pentecostal church? Yeah. Man. The first time they told me to go up there and pray, I said, I didn't get up there and pray. Because they were all black people. Yeah. Pastor Shields comes up to me, he goes, you're going to go up there and get prayed for. I said, no, I'm not. He said, Reuben, you're going to go up there and get prayed for. No, I'm not. He goes, why not? I said, they're going to put me in a bowl and they're going to dance around me. <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> True story. <laughs> it's like, oh my let me just pray for you right now. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, our goodness. Go ahead, yeah. No, I was just, I just want to make a comment on that because, um, because I've seen like videos of you know people in Africa are praising mm -hmm. and worshiping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're dancing. Yeah. You know, and to me, I guess how you, you differentiate it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yes. Because I was the one before I came to the Lord. I was at the clubs. Mm -hmm. I was always at the clubs. I mm -hmm. loved to dance, and and when they called last call, I still wasn't down. I wanted to go to after hour parties and keep dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying to you. I would love to dance. And then coming into the church, and then when you go to you know functions with the family and like these wet weddings parties, well, what do you do? You know, you just. Yes. I remember one time we all went to a to a quinceanera, and my ex husband had was there with his with his wife, his second wife or his third wife, I don't remember. <laughs> but anyway, they were there, and I sat there. He says, "Liz, how can I just sit in here?" And um, he says, "Go go dance." And I really didn't know how to um, I didn't know how to to really, you know, explain that to him. Mm -hmm. Because he was my partner, you know, in the past, in the world. Mm -hmm. We danced, we went to parties together, and always clubbing, so it, it was kind of like a, you know what I mean? It, yeah. was, it was different, it's like, well, how, how did you, I go, oh, I didn't want to say to him, I don't dance no more, because I, I like to dance. Mm -hmm. So how do you, you know? The whole thing is that, and you understand what, um, what um, Lucifer held, he was not only the head of the choir, he was the head musician. Yeah. Yeah. So you think these people were singing up there and just, oh! Ah. No, they had a beat going. No. Yeah. There, there was body movement up there. Yeah. I believe there was. Because yeah. that's what music does. Yeah. Yes. And that's what moved him. And that's what moved God. Right. His ability to worship God mm -hmm. and, and music. Mm -hmm. So if there was music, there had to be a two-step somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you can't just dance. I wanted to dance with my dad for uh -huh. my birthday. Mm -hmm. Those, those moments that are very special, special. to you. It's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you're not thinking of the world and no. drinking. You just want to embrace yes. that yes. time. Right. You'll catch me and my wife mm -hmm. in certain places. If yeah. there's music, I'll grab my wife, we'll dance. Yeah. I don't have an issue with that. I really don't. Even the day of my really wedding at, at, the, at the church, mm -hmm. you know, that some of the pastors left, because I, I told them, we're going to dance. You know, we're going to celebrate. It's my wedding. My, my son was at home. My dad walked me down the aisle. And these are things that I wanted because my, my, my son's always in prison and my dad's a heroin addict. So I needed that, mm -hmm. that time. I needed to have that moment with yes. him. Yes. You 
No. I like that. I love it. Every one of us have a destiny. Yes. The Bible says there's intended in for every one of us. So everyone has a destiny. The difference between us arriving in our, our destiny and why we come up short is because we're not determined. Yes. We've got to have a determined destiny. The scripture said that when God began to speak to Adam when he was in the garden, he put a demand on the word. He told him, you're going to go name these animals. And he named animals. He said, you're going to take care of this garden. The same way with us. Yeah. we got to put a demand on the word of God that lives within us. Yeah. Yeah, There's a destiny for us, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes for Pastor Ruben, I'll delay my destiny. Why? Because I haven't been determined yet. Oh. I still have a bunch of little hang-ups. Mm -hmm. I have a little, a little bit of flaws here and a little bit of flaws yes. there. i got to be determined. i got to get there. That's why when Jesus told Peter, he said, get back, saying, get behind me. He was determined. He had a destiny. That's why he told Judas, go do what you got to do and do it right away. Because there was a determination in him. There was more to telling him to go betray him. He was determined to get to the cross. He was determined to die to the man flesh that he came in. So he could become spiritually inclined again. That's why the scripture says to him, Paul says, I, I only don't want to know you in the time of suffering. I just don't want to experience you here on this earth with my house payment, my car payment, my husband, my wife, my children. I just want to experience you there. Mm -hmm. But I want to know you what holds you up. Yes. I want to experience the spiritual things of who you are. Share that with me. I want it. And sometimes we really don't want it. Mm. We settle for the less. And I've been guilty of that. I've been really guilty of that. If I want to have you guys in my life, the ones that are pushing me right now, I would have settled. Mm -hmm. I would have probably walked away from here. But we have to be determined. We have to have a, a goal and objective. What am I trying to do? Yes. You're not here to serve me. Mm -hmm. See, pastors teach people to become slaves to them. Mm -hmm. No. You're not here to serve me. I'm just a shepherd of the house that God is using to get you to your, your destiny. And whatever you have is going to benefit me. Mm -hmm. So if I keep you suppressed, mm -hmm. I never get the hope of who you are in Christ. Oh. If I make you wait 10 years and go through all these loops, I just miss 10 years of your capability that God wanted to use with me the first year you were with me. Oh, wow. Come on. Come on. I hear people all the time. I go to church and say, you can't have the Holy Ghost the way you're living. The Bible, if you really study the Word of God, when the disciples, when Jesus told Mary to tell them to go to the upper room, right? He told them to go down there. They weren't all living right. Yeah. Yeah, Thomas true. didn't believe him. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Come on. Yeah. There was a lot of hang ups yeah. there. Yeah. So for us to tell people that the Holy Ghost won't come to you because of the way you're living, once again, I'm not giving license to sin. That ain't what I'm saying here. No. What I'm saying, God's going to do what He needs to do to help you get to your destiny. Yes, yes. Yes. God is prepping you right now. Yes. What do you mean God is prepping you? Yes, God is prepping you. Right? Mm -hmm. I pastor always say this. He goes, I want you to ever come to me, Ruben, and say that the, that the enemy blindsided you. Mm -hmm. The enemy could never blindside you. Mm -hmm. That's true. Never. Yeah. No. No. That's why he says, pulling back the scales of your eyes. God wanted you to see the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. The watchman on the tower. There's so many things that God has given us that we have yet to put to play in our lives. And because we lack, my children lack. Yeah. Because I lack, my grandkids lack. Mm -hmm. i got to get to my determined destiny. Not for my sake. Mm -hmm. That's why um, Jesus tells Mary and Martha, they question them just like we would have. Right? When we lose a loved one, why? Bible said Mary and Martha said, hey, if you would have been here, this would have never happened. He said, thank God for your yeah. sake, I wasn't here. Yeah. I was like, what? I go, look at Jesus getting back at him. Mm -hmm. No, but I understood what he meant. He said, thank God that I wasn't present because now you're going to believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. get to see the He'll take the circumstances in our life to make us believers. Yes. He'll take the circumstances in our life to increase our faith. He'll take the circumstances in our life in our life to make me a better husband, yeah. a better dad, a better yeah. grandpa. Yeah. Them circumstances. Yeah. That's why I tell Mary Martha, thank God for your sake, I wasn't present. 
cannot even see the visible manifestation of who I am. Come on. So do people see the manifestation in my life? They said people are going to start going, that more people in church will go to a psychiatrist and go get counseling out of church. Oh, wow. My friend's a counselor. She's a Christian counselor. She said it's been difficult. Because the people say, we go to the church and we don't see no difference. We have to go over here. Oh, wow. There's things in us. Yes. The Bible said he bestowed them upon you. Yeah. In other words, they've been given to you. Whether you say I have them or not, they're there. They're there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're there. They're there. Amen. The manifestation of Jesus is the world is waiting on him. Yes. That's why the scripture says the rocks. The earth. Yes. Frets and shakes. Yeah. Waiting yeah. for the manifestation of the sons of God. This earth is waiting for us, church. Yes. Amen. Yeah. He didn't say the heavens. No. He said this earth, which means it's my children. Yeah. It's our loved ones. It's our friends. It's the people we meet. We, we meet. He said they, they're sitting there moaning, Mama. Imagine moaning. My, my pastor would say little things like this. He said, "You guys hear the trees blow the wind." He said, that's the moaning of the groaning oh, wow. of this earth waiting oh, wow. for the manifestation. Oh my God, it's an earthquake! The earth moans yeah. and groans for the manifestations of the sons of God. Yeah. The volcanoes erupt. Yeah. The earth moans and groans for the manifestation of the sons of God. This earth is waiting for us. Waiting for you. Yeah. Waiting for me. But we're hung up huh. on our testimonies. Oh, wow. He said, he's already given us, he's already given you a gift for ministry. He said, bestowed upon you. Kingdom means royalty. Yes. I'm going to establish the kingdom of God in my house. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is I need to ready to establish the royal earth. Through everything that's connected to it. That's why he said, For me and my house, we shall serve. But he's saying, You bring royalty to the house. Amen. Yes. Nobody less, everything up. Wow. Yeah. Amen. As you see, my son, he would be jacked up. And my pastor says, Stop looking at him jacked up. Oh. I'd be like, What? He said, How can you not? Things are missing from the house. Da -da 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 -da. He says, stop speaking that. Why don't you try speaking the manifestation of what God could do to him? Yeah. Stop saying you're poor. <laughs> stop saying people you're sick. Yeah. We're healed. Yes. The Bible said by the 39 strike on his back. Yeah. By the shedding of his blood. By the shedding of his blood. Right. How many ever confess that? Today we're going to take communion. This is the blood we're going to drink. This is the bread. This is the body. It's been broken. And we take the cup. But this is the blood that's been shed. We drink it, but we go out the door and not to leave it. There you go. Just going through the motions. Going yeah. through the motions. Going, yeah. Going through the motions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're healed. I don't care how bad it looks. That's right. I don't care if yeah. Pastor Ruben. Yeah. And they're walking with a little or not. That's why people say, when Paul was given the thorn in the side, oh. right? They say God allowed that. No, God didn't allow that. Because they would have took from his credibility. What do you mean, Pastor Ruben? It would have been, if you would have said that God gave him that thorn, what you're saying, God couldn't heal him. That's why he remained like that for the rest of his life. Yeah. Our God heals us. Yes. That thorn was given to him, the Bible said, because there was a, 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 a messenger sent by who? The enemy. Satan. By Satan. To do what? To buffet him. To buffet him. That's where the thorn came from. That's where it came from. God didn't allow it. No. It was sent to him. Yeah. Just like the things in our lives today. Yes. The deaths that come in our homes. Mm -hmm. The circumstances that are all around us. Mm -hmm. These things that he sent up, God. Mm -hmm. But we'll sit there, because I've been guilty of it. God, why? No. Why do you allow this? No. Mm -hmm. 
No, the scripture said uh, it was a messenger sent by Satan yeah. to buffet me. Buffet. Somebody said buffet me. Buffet me. Imagine how polished I should look. <laughs> buffet me. Yeah. <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, we gotta call it for what it is. Yeah. Yes. If God is good, He's good. He's good. Yeah. Right? Yes. That's why we gotta be real careful with our character and our integrity. My kids would say things to me like, Dad, I, I, I want to believe, but I see your mom struggle so bad, I don't know if God is real. Mm -hmm. well, I've heard that before. It wasn't because the life we're living, it was the life they seen and heard. Mm -hmm. That's the goodness we're talking about tonight. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but for years I've come to church and my kids go, what for? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell me my wife, what for? Mm -hmm. Anyhow, but you guys, anything you know good, and then I started having people tell me in my life, and I began, I became just like them by saying, oh, God is going to process. No, God don't process. God gets it done. And he gets it done, like, right now, yeah. if you want it. Yeah. He said, to those of you that believe. Yeah. He's not even talking about faith no more. Mm -hmm. He said, to those of you that believe. Mm -hmm. I want to be a believer. I don't want to be stuck 80 years old here at the church mm -hmm. still telling people, do you have faith in what must you Mm. No. We mature and we grow up. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed as you get older, the problems get worse? Yeah. Same yeah. way with your faith. Your faith increases, mm -hmm. it gets better. Mm -hmm. It gets better. Yeah. With the struggle, yes. with the buffeting. Yeah. 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 The issue we got to be careful with is that we're not giving the enemy credit. Credit. There you go. We're not giving the enemy, the enemy the credit, but at the same time, they can yeah. testify to it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what God was telling Paul right here. Yeah. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. Let your testimony be right. Yeah. yeah. Be careful what you say. God is good. I'm going to close it out with this. Jesus is prepping his disciples for death. Mm -hmm. And I talked about that scripture. He said, pick up your cross, pick up your cross. and carry it. Yeah. He didn't say, bring your burdens along. No. What he's saying Die. Die. Die, Pastor Ruben. Not physically. No. Die to you. Yes. Die to you. If I could die to myself, I wouldn't say 99% of my burdens would be gone. Come on. 99% of my burdens would be gone if I could just die to myself. Somebody say, die to myself. Die to myself. So if Jesus said, pick up your cross and carry it, pick it up. How I many know that that cross got heavy for Jesus? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the scripture said when Jesus was walking, he stumbled and he fell. Mm -hmm. And the scripture said immediately, Simon, I say, pick it up. Do we have any of those men in this house? Wow. Sister Jamie's struggling. Is there anybody going to help her pick up her cross? Wow. We don't. Mm. I'll pray for you. How many of you have ever heard somebody say, I'm always praying for you? No. I've actually say, stop saying that, everybody, you're lying. Because <laughs> we're not always praying. People take that scripture, I pray without ceasing, to the extreme. Yeah. Well, Paul was saying, I'm going to be consistent. Yes. Because yeah. Paul would have been lying if we prayed every second of the day. Because he was going through some stuff. How many go through some stuff? Oh, yeah. yeah. And you don't even have time to pray. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I know I have. Yeah, that's good. I'm so focused on the problem that I forget to pray. Yeah. It's that. better off that you go tell people that I will pray for you. I will keep you in my mindset. Mm -hmm. And every time I can't remember, I'll pray for you. Yeah, that's better. That's what Paul says. Yeah. Paul came to him, he said, in memory of you. In memory. Yeah. Be encouraged, church. Yeah. This message wasn't to beat us down. I want us to get to that place of that determined destiny. Yeah, amen. I want us to get that breakthrough that we all deserve, that we all live for, that we all been praying for, that we've been fasting for, and we've been desiring. Amen. Come on, desiring. Amen. amen. God is doing stuff in the midst of us, church. Yes, he is. God is moving. God is moving. It doesn't seem like it. God is moving. He is moving. 
How many believe that God is moving? Yes. Mm -hmm. He is moving. My, uh, when I was homeless, and um, my pastor said, what are y'all worried about being homeless for? How did I do it? So he said, pray for things to me. I was like, what? He said, will you stop complaining? He said, stop complaining, you're homeless. I lived under some trees behind Center Street, and I showed Pastor, Pastor Biden, and I lived there for a long time. And he would drop me off there. He said, I'm going to be dropping you off if you're going to keep complaining about being homeless. He said, did you know Jesus didn't have a place to lay his head? Yeah. That is true. <laughs> I was like, but I wasn't into ministry like I am now. Yeah. These are just things I heard him saying to me. And sometimes if we listen to the people that God is encamped with, they're always speaking into our life. Yeah. The issue is that we got to stop picking and choosing who we're going to hear. There you go. We got to. We really do. We have some great teachers here. I would put every one of our teachers against any church. But no problem. Now stand there and be a crowd. Because that's the kind of people we have here. We're rooted and grounded here. Yes, amen. I can put Mama Beard up here, Catherine, Sally, Richard, Frankie, me. We can get up here, Sister Rosanna. We'll get up here. We'll preach a message. That's how well equipped we are. The issue is, can we start believing it now? Believing. Can we start operating from it? You guys be good. Be encouraged. Amen. Pray for your families. Yes. Pray for your breakthroughs. Keep having Brother Castro in his prayer. Yes. His mom just passed. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's hold him up in prayer. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hold Mama Bear up in prayer. Amen. This weather gets to her. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just keep us all in prayer. Keep yes. um. Sister Pastor Sally's mom up there. Mm -hmm. I've been looking for her at church now. <laughs> I told her the other day, stop hiding. <laughs> she was way on that side. And I was like, what are you doing over here? <laughs> Which was all right, but I'm just like, what are you doing over here? I'm wondering looking for her over here. <laughs> but anyway, I love you guys. Be encouraged, amen. amen. Don't let your goodness be talked about, amen. Mm -hmm. Hold on to your character, your integrity. Everything about you is saying something, amen. amen. Did you know that the best testimony is a silent testimony? Yes. Because your body language speaks louder than words can ever speak. There you go. How many ever, how many ever got mad and just slammed whatever was there but never said a word? Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our body language speaks loud. Speaks loud. Yeah. 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 My wife, uh, my wife would tell my pastor, I didn't say nothing. And he said, did you roll your eyes? She said, yeah. And he said, a whole lot more than you could ever say. Yeah. yeah. Our body language. Yeah, the body language. The body language. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, Pastor. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you all for coming for today. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you for this evening, Father God. We thank you for the word that was shared today, Father God. We thank you for everyone that's here, Father God. We lift up.